question C3. So we're missing the um, we're missing this point here in plan. Okay, we don't know that one. Now, surface A has a pitch of 45 degrees, so we can draw in our line at angle 45 degrees, and when it hits that, that's the height of it. Now, surface B also has the same height, so if I do an end elevation, you can see surface B has the same height. So if I do an end elevation, surface B intersects the top of surface A, and that gives me the point there. Now, if I have a point in two views, okay, it can always be found in a third. Okay, so I have the elevation of it, I have the end elevation of it, so I can drop the line down across and the line down, or point down from elevation, okay, until they intersect, and that gives you the plan view of, point, uh, of the point on the line of intersection. So 20, uh, 10 question C3, part A, draw the given plan and elevation. So surface A has a pitch of 45 degrees, surface B has a pitch of 45, uh, 40 degrees. So on surface A, I can just draw in surface A and C at 45 degrees. Okay, drop these points down for plan. Okay, now I don't know where surface B is in plan. An end elevation will provide me with that answer because in end elevation, surface B will appear as an edge. Okay, so I'm going to bring my points across here. Some teachers do an elevation or an auxiliary elevation. The reason I do get students to do an end elevation here is because they often forget that height there that surface B starts from. So 40 degrees. If you have a point in two views, it can always be found in a third. Uh, by the way, I forgot to say, heights, everything divided by 5. So that's the plan and elevation complete. So in order to see the dihedral angle between surface A and surface B, we need to look along the line of intersection and see that as a point. Now in 3D, you can skip the, uh, seeing this as a true length. But you cannot skip that on a drawing sheet. It has to be looking along the true length. So when you look along the uh, true length of the line and it appears as a point, you get uh, surface A appearing as an edge, you get surface B appearing as an edge, and you get the dihedral angle between the two surfaces. So surface B appears there, and surface A appears there, and it's onto this auxiliary plane for the dihedral angle. So just another way of looking at it, you can see them there as edges. So part B, to find the dihedral angle between surface A and B, I'm going to have to Look along the true length of the line of intersection and see it as a point and see both surfaces as edges. So I need to check, is the line of intersection LI already a true length in plan? No, because it's not parallel to the XY line elevation. Is it a true length in elevation? No, because it's not parallel to the XY line in plan. So I'm going to look perpendicular to the line of intersection using an auxiliary so i'll take my distances from here and project perpendicular to line li then i will look along the line of intersection and take the distances from the x1 y1 line back
So, as I said, I'm going to look down along the line of intersection L1 and take the distances from, you can take it from the X1, Y1 line back, but as there's a lot of space there, we can use the datum lines to take the distances from back there. Now what's happening for the development is surfaces B and C are being rotated flat onto the horizontal plane. Okay, so there's the two surfaces. First of all, we're going to move um, a surface B is going to be rotated until it's flat onto the horizontal plane. So there's surface B when it's flat on the horizontal plane. And then surface C is being moved, okay, about um, about this edge here as a fold line until it's parallel to the horizontal plane. Okay, so so maybe a few degrees more. Okay, roughly about there. Sorry, there. Right click. Okay, and then you see both surfaces as true shapes in plan view. So for development surface B and C, okay, I'm going to every line on the development is a true length. So I'm going to drop down L and N, and I'm going to just leave my visualizer. Okay, I'm going to draw a line here parallel to L and N. L and N is a true length in plan because it's parallel to the X Y line in elevation. Now every line on the development is a true length. Line L to I is a true length here in our auxiliary elevation so I'm just going to take the true length of line L to I and I'm going to swing an arc down here from L and N because N to K is equal to L to L to I. I'm going to drop this point down here and I'm going to bring this across here and then this is going to be a dash line here. Okay, so to find C, right, every line on a development has to be a true length. Now, I'm going to label these and I'm going to divide surface C into two triangles. Right, so I'll put this into a triangle and I'm going to use a series of true lengths to solve this. N to O in plan is a true length because it appears as a point in elevation. So I'm going to take my compass, set it to N to O, and then from N in my development, I'm going to swing an arc here. Now, somewhere along that development lies point O. Okay, so to find point O, I need to find the true length of K to O. Okay, so I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to put my compass on K and swing O down here. I bring O up here and I'm going to join O back to okay, K. All right, so this is the true length of K to O because it's parallel to the XY line in plan, so it's the true length in elevation. Now, I'm going to take my compass here, set it to the true length of K to O, lift, mark it here. And here's point O. So now I can join uh, N to O. So I have that line on the development. Okay, and I have point K. So now I need point D. Right, K to D appears as a point in elevation. So or K to P rather, sorry. K to P appears as a point in elevation. So it's a true length in plan. So I'm going to take my compass, swing it from K. Now, somewhere along this uh, arc lies uh, point P. Now to get P exactly on this here, I need to find the true length of O to P and swing from point O. Now O to P in plan is a true length, or O to P in plan is parallel to the X, Y line. So O to P in elevation is a true length. So I'm going to take this distance here and swing from, um, I'm going to take that distance there and swing from O. 
So I'm going to assume there. And that's point P there. Now, a common mistake among students will be to take this one. They'd actually take the true length of O to K. They confuse or write the old point O there with the new point O. So I'll join them together. There we go. So that's that part done. So this is a short video on the development here. So we have surface D here in yellow and we're going to develop that surface. So here's a partial flatten, okay, about to take place of it. Um, I think it's hidden there. So that's just a partial amount of it, right? So what's happening is, okay, this, uh, this curved surface here has been folded out onto uh, a plane. So that's a partial one being done. Oh, Jesus. Um, there we go. Right there. Now, um, then here's the drone development. Okay, so the curve is divided up into 60 30. So this one and this one is divided up into 60 30. And you step it along this line. And here's the development here. Okay, so all this curved surface, this one and, and this one, is folded out flat. So uh, the bottom one is representing, okay, what's on the left, the left area, and the right area down here okay and then this large area in here is representing this one the top half now in 3d that's vertical lap pane so what's happening on our sheet is that will be drawn flat onto or it will be drawn parallel to a um, horizontal plane okay so you can see that's it there and move copy body that again and they'd be just drawn out onto your sheet there, out on the side, in line with the surface D in plan as it makes it easier to do. To develop surface D, we're going to divide this up into 60, 30, plot the points out along here. So I'm just going to bring these out. In uh, elevation, I'm going to divide up my circle into 60, 30. So you can start wherever you want. So it's essentially the top half here that is coming out. So I know the numbers would slightly confuse you here, but all you need to realize is that one, two, three of them go out here and on one side, like a quarter of the uh, circle and then a quarter of the circle on the other side go out. And then this here represents the whole semicircle. So that's part C, part two done. Uh, done.